Okay. So unique chimneys. This is your first first job and you said you had it for years. So it's a sales job, essentially. That's You're right. <laughs> so t- talk about what you learned as as a young person in his teens about selling through unique chimneys. I'm sure they gave you a script. They told you to, you know, yeah. to say the script and all that. Talk, talk a little bit about your, your learnings there. You know what? I appreciate you asking that because I think to this day, it was the most significant job of my life because... It taught me, here I am, I have this stack of eight and a half by 11 papers with line by line and alphabetical order, everybody's name, their, you know, Armonks, this, that, da, 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 Scarsdale, White Plains, you know, you name it. And I just went down the list and, and made the phone calls. And um, I learned about so many things. This was over the phone at the time. And so I learned about energy was the first thing that Within two seconds of somebody picking up the phone, I could feel and tell where they were at. Were they just coming home? Were they sitting on the couch? Were they in an argument with their child? Were they preoccupied and frustrated with the present moment? And I, I kind of, it was like an A-B test. I would make these instant predictions of like, okay, this person sounds like they're on the move. Let me, let me deploy this message. You know, this person sounds like they're sitting watching TV being lazy. I can spend a little bit more time here. They're, they're lonely. They're looking for connection. And so after thousands and thousands of phone calls, you start to read the energy of people. That's the first thing. The second thing was learning how to different lines, how to connect with people, what resonated and what didn't resonate. I could see how it was like a Rubik's cube. And I was, I was just turning the Rubik's cube saying, okay, that didn't work. Maybe this works. Don't do the whole first and last name. Just do the first name. You know, this is where you use pause. This is where you provide, provide optionality for somebody. Uh, the person's not closing on this price. Maybe I'll throw in a discount. I think that will have a high probability of closing. You know, don't talk to the man in this case. Talk to the woman. You know, it, it was it was like a game. And I started to learn about human connection through the phone. And I credit my time at that job to doing such good interviews and being really successful as a marketer in my, you know, my, my career was because of the the nuance and being able to understand how you connect with somebody, especially being a telemarketer, because your window of opportunity to connect deeply or connect at all with somebody such that they would stay on the phone with you is pretty narrow (laughs) because most people are ready to hang up, but they didn't hang up on me. (laughs) Do you recall any specific examples of how you were able to turn a no into a yes in that, in that job? Yeah. Anything stand out? Yes. Um, it was a firefighter after September 11th and I called him. I don't remember exactly when it was, but it was during the, it was during the cycles of people all rotating. And, you know, when that happened to people from, people from Westchester, they were coming down and doing rotations to clean debris and to do work. And I remember calling this guy, he was a firefighter from FDMY. He had just come home from a 36 hour tour at the trade center. And his energy was just, he was exhausted. He was exhausted and and we were on the phone for about 30 minutes. And for the first 10 of it, we didn't talk about chimney cleaning at all. You know, I just started asking him questions, you know, we were talking and he felt heard, he felt seen. And I didn't make a pitch to close on him for a, for a chimney cleaning, but I, I followed up. I followed up a few days later and ultimately he got his chimney clean for $40 or whatever it was. But at the time, uh, yeah, I, I specifically remember being able to have this intimate conversation with a firefighter who had just spent 36 hours with a mask and gloves in the heart of ground zero. And here I am getting to talk to him on the phone. And I, I remember specifically saying, okay, I'm, I'm not just going to try and sell this guy a chimney cleaning. There's something bigger going on in his life. And I want to acknowledge it. So I did that. And I'll never forget that conversation. I remember that distinctly because I think the people next to me were like, wow, that was a long time on the phone because I was I was using time versus closing. 
And I thought it was worth it. And it was because it, it, we built a relationship in some weird way, just allowing him to feel heard and seen. And that's what we all want after all, isn't it? Yeah. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.